ایٹین ہنڈریڈ آورز پاکستان اسٹینڈر ٹائم السلام علیکم دس از ریڈیو پاکستان دی نیوز ریڈ بائی عائشہ نایاب فرسٹ دی ہیڈ لائنس پریزڈنٹ ہیز ٹریس دا ٹیکس امبٹسمن فار امپروونگ لیز آن ویتھ ایف پی آر فار پرام ٹو ریڈریسل آف ٹیکس پیئرز گریونسز Pakistan today conducted successful test flight of surface-to-surface ballistic missile Shaheen-1 having a range of 900 km. Economic Coordination Committee of the Cabinet has approved a technical supplementary grant of 1 billion rupees for launching advertisement campaigns to educate people about COVID-19. Foreign Minister has urged international community including Britain to play effective role to get stopped blatant human rights violation by Indian forces in illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. In India, farmers protesting against controversial agricultural laws held an All India Strike Bharat Ban today to mark four months of their agitation. United States has announced to send coronavirus related humanitarian aid of 15 million dollars to Palestine. And now the news in detail. President Dr. Arif Alvi has stressed the need to further strengthen the office of tax ombudsman for betterment of the country's economy. He was talking to F- Federal Tax Ombudsman Mushtaq Ahmed Sukhera, who presented to him the annual report for the last year in Islamabad today. The President stressed on improving liaison with FPR for prompt redressal of taxpayers' grievances against mismanagement of tax officials. Pakistan today conducted successful test f- te- flight of Shaheen 1A surface to surface ballistic missile having a range of 900 km. According to ISPR, the test flight was aimed at revalidating various designs and technical parameters of the weapon system including advanced navigation. The flight test of the missile was witnessed by DG Strategic Plans Division Lieutenant General Nadeem Zaki Manch, Chairman NASCOM Dr. Raza Samur, Commander Army Strategic Forces Command Lieutenant General Muhammad Ali and the scientists and engineers of strategic organizations President Arif Alvi Prime Minister Imran Khan Chairman Joint Chief of Staff Committee and Services Chiefs congratulated the scientists and engineers on successful conduct of the missile test Director General Strategic Plans Division appreciated the technical prowess, dedication and commitment of scientists and engineers who contributed wholeheartedly in making the missile launch successful. Economic Coordination Committee has approved a technical supplementary grant of 1 billion rupees for launching advertisement campaigns to educate people about the third wave of COVID-19. The approval was given at the ECC meeting chaired by Finance Minister Abdul Hafiz Sheikh in Islamabad today. The advertisement campaign will be launched by Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. Registration of people above 50 years of age for COVID vaccination would be open on 30th of this month. This was stated by Minister for Planning and Development Asad Umar in a tweet today. Registration of those who are 60 and older have already been opened. Asad Umar, who is also Chairman National Command and Operations Center, called upon people to encourage everybody who is above 50 years of age to register themselves for vaccination. Special Assistant to Prime Minister on National Health Services Dr. Faisal Sultan has reaffirmed the government's commitment to purge the country of polio virus. Addressing an event in Islamabad today, he urged the parents to get their children vaccinated against polio to save them from disability. The Special Assistant said the polio workers have been trained for the upcoming anti-polio vaccination campaign giving in view the threat posed by COVID-19. He was confident that the efforts against polio will soon bear fruit. On the directions of Prime Minister Imran Khan, the loan limit under Now Pakistan Housing Program has been enhanced 100% to 10 million rupees. In a tweet today, PTI leader Faisal Javed said the markup rate has been reduced to 3% and 5%. He said the Prime Minister is personally monitoring the Now Pakistan Housing Program. PPP Senator Sayyid Yusuf Raza Gilani has been appointed as the opposition leader in the Senate. A notification to this effect was issued by the Senate Secretariat today. 
This is Radio Pakistan. Finance Minister Hafiz Sheikh says the country's financial institutions are being put on modern lines under the reforms process. In an interview with PTV, he said despite coronavirus, the GDP growth rate is expected to be 3%, which indicates a good performance. The finance minister said the reforms process and economic revival will bolster the world's confidence on Pakistan. World Bank will provide $1.3 billion to Pakistan to support its initiatives in different sectors. An agreement to this effect was signed in Islamabad today. This financing will support the government's initiatives in social protection, climate change, agriculture and food, governance and human capital development. Speaking on the occasion, Minister of for Economic Affairs Husra Bakhtiar said, this continued and enhanced support shows the confidence of international financial institutions on the progress and reforms being taken by the present government. Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi has urged international community, including Britain, to play their active role to get stopped blatant human rights violations in Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Talking to member of British House of Lords, Lord Wajid Khan, in Islamabad today, he said resolution of Kashmir dispute as per the UN Security Council resolutions is imperative for durable peace and stability in the region. The foreign minister said Pakistan attaches great importance to its relation with Britain. He also emphasized the need for promoting multifaceted bilateral cooperation between Pakistan and the European countries in different fields including trade and politics. In Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, the All Parties Hurriyat Conference has said that the territory has been virtually turned into a battleground. The APHC spokesman in a statement in Srinagar said that nearly one million Indian troops are victimizing the innocent people for demanding their inalienable right to self-determination guaranteed to them by the United Nations Security Council resolution. The spokesman also expressed a deep concern over the atrocities inflicted on the people of Kashmir by the Indian occupational forces. He said the presence of a gigantic military force to suppress the civil population engaged in peaceful freedom struggle has created a frightful atmosphere and a sense of insecurity among the local populace of Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan has strongly condemned the attack on petroleum distribution terminal in Jizyan region of Saudi Arabia. In a statement today, Foreign Office spokesperson Zahid Hafiz Chaudhary said such attacks causing fear and terror as well as disruption of commercial activities cannot be condoned. The spokesperson reaffirmed Pakistan's full support and solidarity with the brotherly kingdom of Saudi Arabia against any threat to its security and territorial integrity. In India, farmers protesting against controversial agricultural laws held an All India Strike Bharat Band today to mark four months of their agitation. The countrywide demonstrations affected rail and road traffic as well. The Samyukta Kisan Morcha appealed to protesting farmers to be peaceful and not get involved in any conflict during the day-long visit. A massive protest demonstration was held in Bangladesh's capital Dhaka against Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to the country. Many people were injured during clashes between demonstrators and the police in Motijhel area of Dhaka. The police also detained dozens of people during the protest demonstration. The protesters said that Modi is stoking religious tensions and inciting anti-Muslim violence. They also said that Modi is also responsible for the killing of more than 1,000 Muslims in the Indian state of Gujarat in 2002. United States had announced to send $15 million to coronavirus-related humanitarian aid for Palestinians in the occupied West Bank and Gaza. In an address to the Union Security Council's monthly briefing on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in New York, U.S. Ambassador to the United States, United Nations, Linda Thomas-Greenfield, said the package will be the first such funds transferred under the Biden administration. And finally, the weather. Dry weather is expected in most parts of the country during the next 12 hours. However, partly cloudy weather and rain thunderstorm is expected in Upper Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Gilgit Baltistan and Kashmir during the period. And that is the end of the news. For more news and analyses, log on to our website video.gov.pk and also watch live video streaming of our bulletin on the link for facebook.com forward slash Radio Pakistan News.